Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries How-To video. My name is Tom Clark and on today's How-To, we're going to discuss how to increase the life of your engineering class chain in a harsh environment. And in order to do that, I'm going to bring out my special guest, Chris Fall. He is with Subaki and Subaki is a global supplier of change and sprockets. Chris, thanks for coming out. Yeah, thank you, Tom. I know we've got a lot of stuff on the table right here, so what do we have? What are we going to see today? Well, I brought in these samples to help explain the main factors that cause chains to wear out in harsh environments and what are the typical factors that cause it. Okay, so where are we going to start on the table today? Well, f um, first I'd like to explain that normal chain wear occurs between the pins and the bushings. Mm -hmm. And as the pins and bushings wear, the chain stretches or elongates, and that's called elongation or chain stretch. If the chains have rollers, <clears throat> the rollers will also wear and become sloppy, and, and that's normal. Well, what would be considered abnormal wear then, Chris? Well, it's abnormal if a chain fractures or breaks, and I have an example here of one that has fractured on the bushing. Yeah, you can actually see the crack right there. Yeah. Not good if you're on a roller coaster. No, not no. good. So if this, if this happens, the, the entire application or system should be analyzed to see if there's any problems with overloading or any other conditions that could have caused that. What are some other signs of abnormal wear that we would look for? Yes, if the sprockets have interference marks on them or the sidebars of the chain have marks on them or even the outsides of the pins. Those are all signs of abnormal wear, um, possibly um, misalignment and those should, this, again, the system should be analyzed to see what's going on. Okay, and we have a worn out chain right here, something right. like that. Okay, where is this from? This worn chain um, is from a clinker elevator. And I'll assume that a clinker is something abrasive. Right, right. Okay. A clinker is used to make cement, so it's extremely abrasive. Okay. And as you can see from the, the worn, wear on the pin, yeah. it's worn quite extensively. Okay. And, and even though it's worn, this is, this is normal. This is how it should wear out. Oh, really? Okay. But we can improve upon that by, you know, adding some other features. Okay. And, and I'm asking myself this question right now. How is Subaki going to improve upon this? <laughs> All right, Chris, tell me. What do you got? <laughs> The main way we can do that is to harden the pins and bushings as much as possible. Okay. And um, I've got a couple of samples here. This is a through hardened pin that's no moderately hardened all, all right. the way through the surface. But we can induction harden the pins, which creates an extremely hard case around the outside that's about an eighth inch deep. Okay. We maintain the moderate hardness on the inside or the core of the pin, and that core maintains its ductility while the hardened surface helps what? it. <laughs> ductility. <yeah. laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's not the kind of the ductility we're talking about. So, but that's yeah. better to have that ductility, that's what you're looking for. Ductility is important because if it's not ductile, it becomes brittle, and if it's brittle, it has low impact resistance and can fracture. It can lead to fractures much like this one right here. Right, okay. right. Well, what else can be done to resist abrasion? What can we do? We can put seals on the chain or we can hard chrome plate the pins. Right. Uh, this example is one of Subaki's sealed chains. And it has three different barriers or seals to keep the abrasive material from getting in the bearing area. All right. The first is this uh, polymer seal that's quite durable and it is uh, nested between the, the sidebars. Um, beneath that is another seal where we extend the bushing, and this minimizes the clearance between the sidebar and the bushing. It also helps uh, support the, the polymer seal so it doesn't get crushed. And last but not least, we have a groove on the inside of this bushing that we put a stainless steel ring, and that provides a labyrinth to keep the materials out. Now, how effective is all of this, actually? In some cases, it's quadrupled the life of the chain. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. But, but what about corrosion? Well, corrosion is a problem, and, and I brought a couple of examples of corroded chains. Okay. Uh, as you can see from this pin, it's quite pitted and rusty, okay. and that causes chain elongation. It, it accelerates the r rate that it's going to stretch. Uh, so what can we do to help? Because you're looking at this chain right here, you can see. This is bad. I mean, this looks kind of rough, but yet <laughs> I'm looking over here at this chain, and I can still see metal there. So what's the difference between the two right there? Well, this chain has stainless steel pins and bushings, and that is about the most effective way to prevent corrosion. Okay. We can also do some zinc plating for a less, lesser cost, but 
it's not as effective as stainless. So do the seals provide any corrosion protection? The seals do, in similar how they prevent the material from getting in the pin bushing area, they can also uh, slow down the rate that the corrosive material gets in the pin and bushing area and therefore slow down the rate of corrosion. Okay, so all we have to remember is seals and ducks and we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly. a good thought. No, Chris, thanks so much <laughs> Thank for your you. valuable information. Chris Fall from Subaki. And uh, remember, no matter what you're doing when you're working with the chains and working with the sprockets, always wear your PPE, your personal protective equipment. Uh, always important to wear that. Hopefully this helped your practical application. But if you do have any questions, make sure you contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location, and they'll be sure to help you. And uh, don't forget to look for other Motion Industries how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.